very, very warm welcome to all the participants. Let us begin with a short Shanti part. Gently close your eyes. Hands on your knees. Back straight. Eyes closed. Awareness at the eyebrow center. Take a deep breath in to chant Om three times, followed by the Shanti Mantras. Take a deep breath in. Oh. Together. Om Sahana Vavato Sahana Bhunato Sahavir Yankaravahai Tejas Vinavadita Masto Ma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Om Tatsat. A very warm welcome to all the participants of this eighth edition of the Satyam Yoga Conclave. As all of us would be very well aware by now, this is a series of discussions which we have initiated during the beginning of the Satyam Shatabdi Yogi Yard. And we continue this every month. Every month we have a theme and the culmination of the month takes place with the Satyam Yoga Conclave. And the topics of this conclave also have been moving and having a gentle and gradual progression. Eight months ago, we started with the discussion on understanding the different aspects of life and how yoga can make a difference. Then we went ahead to look at the various types of yogic practices, their applications. And after having understood a little bit about the yogic practices, then we moved ahead to try and understand the principles of living yoga. And today we find ourselves discussing about ecology. At first sight, it might appear a little bit incongruous. What has yoga to do with ecology? Yoga has everything to do with going in, connecting deep within, discovering oneself, increasing our abilities and if possible at some point of time, discovering the transcendental nature. So what then does yoga have to do with ecology? To understand this better, we will have to trace ourselves back to that point when Swami Shivananji gave the mandate to Swamiji. Swami Shivananji gave Swami Satyananda the mandate to spread the message of yoga from door to door and shore to shore. I don't need to go into the details of this. We have discussed this umpteen times. But when Swami Satyananji received this mandate, he thought to himself, why yoga? And for this, he started mingling 
into the crowd. What is the crowd? The crowd is our surroundings. The people with whom we interact. The nature. The people. The flora. The fauna. The elements. And we all know that this has a very strong impact on our being. If we live in a place where it is all muddled, cluttered, dirty, soon we have negativities coming to us. If we live in a place which is gloomy and dark, that induces depression. This is a well-known phenomena. In Europe, where the sun does not shine as much, it has been seen that lack of sun creates a negative impact on the state of mind of persons. And if you look at the definition of ecology, ecology is that study of a unit, a unit in which there are multiple components, some living, some non-living, some elements, and each of them are interdependent. They are not dependent on each other, but they are not totally independent either. They are interdependent and changes in one have an impact on the other. So, when that is the situation, when we have changes around us, that has an impact on us. But likewise, when we create changes within us, it has an impact on our surroundings. The people from olden times, the Rishis and Munis, they realized that human beings are not something set apart in nature. They are an integral part of nature. In the same way as any one bead in this mala is an integral part of the mala. If the mala is cut, the value of the bead is lost. The value of the bead is only as long as the mala is intact. The moment that is gone, the value of the bead is lost. Human beings are only a cog in the chain. And for millennia, not even hundreds, not even thousands, for millennia together, human beings live in the same manner as different animals, plants, birds live in complete harmony with each other. And as long as this happened, we had very good harmonious relation with nature. Things were working nicely, happy. But a few hundred years ago, there was a shift in our understanding. And we felt that because we are more intelligent, because we are slightly better off than other animals. So therefore, we are the epitome of evolution. And the entire nature is meant for us to enjoy. And that changed our attitude. That change in attitude is being reflected today as the climatic change. Climatic change, pollution, environmental disasters. Today, we are all seeing catastrophic landslides. Just yesterday, we were seeing visuals of water. There was a cloud burst and the water flowed so heavy that entire buildings were swept away. What is happening? Nature is reminding us, my dear, please remember you are just one of the part of nature. Don't 
have the delusion that you are controlling nature that can never happen. The delusion and the external manifestation of pollution, environmental catastrophe began with the way of thinking. When that way of thinking shifted, eventually it led to pollution and ecological damage. Until and unless this root cause is not answered, we will never be able to find a lasting solution for the environmental disasters which are hitting us left, right, right and center. Yes, we can have palliative care. Certainly, when the patient is down with a bad case of infection, and the patient is burning up in fever, we can give them paracetamol, rosine, or appropriate medication to bring the fever down. But that is not the treatment. And eight hours later, the fever is going to come back up again. That is what we are trying to do. But modern science does not have any other solution. It has tried everything and we are trying. We should try. But as a doctor, there is one thing which we learn. When you are treating a patient, if you have tried everything and if the treatment is not working, what is very essential is you should step back and review all the conditions once again. More often than not, there are situations, there are conditions, there are hints which we have overlooked. We need to go through them and review. This Satyam Yog Conclave is meant to allow us to review this. We need to also understand, is there some other way which people have done in the past? And that is where the Vedic civilization comes very handy. The modern civilization is not more than a few thousand years old. But the Vedic civilization is more than hundreds and thousands of years in existence. What is their approach? If you look at history, you will see that there were times there have been anecdotes and episodes wherein a similar situation has been depicted. The trees were taken away. The crops started failing. Everything started going wrong. And environmental disasters came in. So, what did they do? What was their solution? We have to try and understand the aspect of that, we have to expand our horizon. And when we expand our horizon, we will find that yoga has a solution, which is in place for many hundred thousand years. The Vedic civilization realized that Human beings are not just individuals, but they are a part of the whole. And there is a very clear correlation between nature outside and the person here. We need to live in collaboration. How can we live in collaboration? Because outside there, there are few things which we can see. But then there are many things which we cannot see. They are beyond the eyes. We cannot see gravity. But gravity has an impact on us. So, do major galaxies. The understanding of the Vedic sciences was much more than that of our planet Earth. 
it extended way beyond we need to understand this we need to explore this and once we explore this then we will understand there is a fundamental difference between the approach of the modern society and the approach of the Vedic civilization. The modern civilization traces its philosophical roots to the Greek civilization. In the Greek civilization, there are four elements which are considered. Prithvi, earth, jala, water, agni, fire, and vayu, air. The fifth tattva, that of space, akash, is not mentioned. The Greek civilization understood life as only the body and perhaps the mind. But there is yet another element which is present, which is fundamentally different than the body and the mind. It is this fifth tattva, the Akash tattva, which separates the Vedic civilization from other civilizations. And they realized that human existence has much, much higher dimensions than what we know. And there has to be a very close collaboration between the human individual and these subtle forces. Some forces which we can perceive, but there are some forces which are beyond the perception of the mind. I can see because I have eyes. If I don't have eyes, I will not be able to see. I can hear because I have ears. I cannot hear if I don't have ears. But if I have eyes and there is a problem in the cognition, then even if the message goes to the brain, we are not able to interpret it. That is the subtle aspect. That is where the mind comes in. But there is another aspect which is beyond the mind. And since this aspect is beyond the mind, we who are dependent on the external senses and these senses work through the mind. Therefore, by definition, we are not able to perceive something which is beyond the mind. But across history, across millennia, there have been people who have been able to transcend this barrier of the mind. And when they transcended this barrier of the mind, they realized, oh, there is a higher dimension. In the same way as if you have a person, hypothetically, in the two dimensions. We know in mathematics, there are dimensions. You have zero dimensions, bindu. Then you have one dimension, length. Then you have two dimensions, length and breadth. And then you have three dimensions, length, breadth and height, x, y, z, three coordinates. Now, for hypothetical reasons, let us try and imagine that there is a two-dimensional object. There is a two-dimensional living being. In the same way as we are three-dimensional living beings, we operate in length, breadth and height. Suppose there is a two-dimensional living being. This two-dimensional living being can have, can perceive only in length and breadth. The third dimension of height is not available to his senses or her senses. Now, this person, if you place this person inside a rectangle or a square, and ask that person to come out, the person is going to go all along the length, all along the breadth, will travel along the perimeter inside and keep traveling to try and see if there is an opening. 
and it that person is going to say no it's not possible i cannot there is no way out but we who are in the third dimension tell him my dear you, this is just a rectangle you step out of it he says what is this out i don't know what this out is this out is the third dimension in the same way we are looking at it till the dimensions of the mind and there is a dimension beyond this dimension beyond is what is very essential when we connect to this dimension then we realize that everything which we see different is actually a part of the whole and there is a harmony there is a cycle a rhythm which flows and when we are able to connect to this rhythm then things change we are working at one dimension but when we go to a deeper dimension we realize that what seems discrete and separate is actually one water which is in one river seems to be discrete and separate from the sea but actually the same water flows and becomes a part of the sea and this sea separates lands so we feel that the land is separate but if this sea is taken away you will see that land two different continents which appear to be different discrete separate they are part of the whole they are connected by underground which was filled with sea and this connection can be utilized to create a change that is where the vedic civilization comes in how can we make a difference that is where the tool of yajna comes in what is yajna that is what we are going to try and understand is yajna only a matter of creating fire and throwing something into it is it just a bonfire or is it just the fire in the incinerator where stuff is just chucked into it or is there something different if so what is the principle that is what we are going to explore and we are going to explore how it can have an impact on our surroundings what are the scientific principles which are invoked in the practice we are also going to see how yoga comes into the picture remember that the fifth dimension involves the dimension of consciousness and in yajna one of the most important aspect is the consciousness of the person who is performing the yajaman the yajaman has to make a sankalpa based on the sankalpa events take place i'll give you a slightly different example in ancient times sage vasishtha a very accomplished rishi was asked to do a yajna so that the king can have children the king wanted a son but the queen wanted a daughter so while the king was uh, speaking to sage vasishtha and explaining everything what he wanted at the end of all of that when he, sage vasishtha started going the queen quietly called him and said look all that is fine but i want a daughter and we all know that the home minister is much more powerful and sage vasishtha being a wise person knew that is better to listen to the queen he said okay madam and went away ahead started doing everything and when he took the sankalpa he took the sankalpa for a daughter the yajna took place everything happened the queen of the king was of course blissfully unaware of this 
and the yajna took place everything happened the queen bore a child and 9 months later out came a daughter the king was furious he called sage vasishtha and he said your yajna has failed you created a daughter he said no sir ask the queen she wanted a daughter and i took the sankalpa for a daughter i took the sankalpa for a daughter that is what is important if he had taken the sankalpa for a son a son would have come he took the sankalpa for a daughter daughter in what was different the procedure was the same the difference was the sankalpa which was taken now if you and i try to do this we may or may not succeed because we have not trained ourselves enough to connect to our higher dimension the dimension of consciousness and therefore our consciousness is not that focused and powerful but the appropriate yajman has practiced this and the yajman is able to direct his consciousness or her consciousness towards this and when that consciousness is directed then that sankalpa takes all things along collaborates with different aspects of nature creates changes and brings about a change within us around us and beyond us that is what is the crux the consciousness if there is no consciousness none of these activities will take place so that is the second aspect we are going to look at in these four uh, sessions in two days the vedic aspect first we are going to have a very esteemed scholar over 30 years of experience in environmental sciences and she is going to give us a very clean clear understanding of what ecology is many times we speak many things but we don't know the basic principles so she is going to allow us to understand the basic principles of ecology what environmental disasters are and what modern science modern society is doing to take care of that that is going to be the second session in the evening today third session tomorrow morning is going to be on the vedic concepts of ecology ecology we look at only planet earth but the vedic seers they went far beyond and they realized there is a very deep interconnection they found that there is a method by which we can connect to those subtle principles and they distilled this procedure wherein this can happen and that procedure is known as yajna that is what we are going to study and understand in the second session and in the third session we are going to speak about the yogic aspect what is yoga ecology please remember that finally it is the consciousness which makes a difference and through the practice of yoga we are able to create a change within us yajna is a tool no doubt but yajna culminates into a process known as antar yag the inner yajna what is this inner yajna what are the practices we are going to have a very brief understanding about this and knowing this what are the tools that we can take to do our bit for environment because it is very clear 
that we are in the middle of a great crisis. And if we don't do our bit, things are going to go only downhill. And therefore, we will need to work with all different aspects. The aim of this conclave is to allow us to become aware. The aim of the conclave is not to compare. The aim of the conclave is not to say one is better than the other. No, that is only a very shallow mentality. The aim of the conclave is to try and decipher what can be simple, practical tools. If some of the tools are using less plastic, so be it. If some of the tools are reducing the carbon footprint, so be it. If some of the tools are methodologies by which we can rejuvenate nature, so be it. If some of the tools are methods by which we can change the energetics, so be it. These are the three different dimensions which we need to look into. And these are the dimensions which have to be understood. Last month, we started the next aspect of yoga, living yoga. And when we begin living, the first thing is we encounter things around us. How can we establish that harmony? Swami Shivananji has defined yoga as the harmony between the head, the heart and the hands. That is within an individual. But when we consider ourselves as the Virat Purush, the cosmic self, as spoken of in the scriptures, where the trees are the hair, the mountains are like the bones, then we have to look at the cosmic self. And in this cosmic self, there again has to be harmony between the different components. How can we establish this harmony? That is what we have to work towards. Some of you might know the famous saying, Yatha Pinde, Tatha Brahmande. As is deep within, so is out there. So if this is true, then if I make a change within myself, there has to be an impact out there. What is the way to do it? How can we ensure that this happens? These are the topics which are going to be covered in this conclave. And it is for this reason that Param Pujya Gurudev Swami Satyananji revived the art of Yajna. At Rikhya, Swamiji spoke of Yajna. Yajna as an ecological practice. Yajna is not a ritual. It is not just a fire ceremony. That is one aspect of it. But along with fire ceremony, there are so many other dimensions. These dimensions have nothing to do with religion. It's a different story that I don't consider India ever had a religion. It is only when external people came, they imposed the concept of religion on India. India always had a way of life. And the ultimate aim of all these was to discover our connection with our higher self, strengthen that connection, maintain harmony with that connection. And when there is harmony, there is bliss, there is happiness, there is goodwill all around. That is the reason why the theme of this month has been Kale Varshatu Parjanyaha 
पृथ्वी सस्य शालिनी लेट देर बी रेन्स एट द करेक्ट टाइम इन द करेक्ट मैनर पृथ्वी सस्य शालिनी लेट मदर अर्थ बी एडोन्ड विथ ब्यूटी एंड हर ब्यूटी इज वेजिटेशन वॉटर इज द बेस ऑफ लाइफ very recently chandrayaan has landed on the moon and one of the aims of chandrayaan landing on the south pole is to try and find if there is water on moon why they are not looking if there is anything on moon they are not looking if there is environment on moon they are looking for water on moon wherever we go if we have water there is life if there is no water there is no life water has the ability to generate change and bring in life that is why water is important and our ancestors realized this so in the entire seasons they said work on the rainy season if the rainy season the rains are manipulated and made to be in the correct manner everything else is set right and in this there is a concept of vrishti which is ativrishti and anavrishti neither is too less of rains useful nor is too much of rains useful we need it at correct times if we have gone into the fields you know that if you sow something it needs water but because it needs water so if you just keep on pouring buckets and buckets of water it is not going to grow it will rot away the sapling will rot away because water is needed in correct proportions that is the concept behind kale varshatu parjanya ha let there be correct rainfall as per the proper times and proper quantity rutu santulan once that happens then there is harmony how do we work with this harmony that is what we will be looking at and that is the reason why we will be looking at what swami satyananda did swami satyananda brought in the concept of yajna and when swami ji spoke of yajna at that time swami ji said a very important thing yajna is the celebration of that moment in time when human beings discovered fire and this fire triggered changes in them triggered their changes in their consciousness their consciousness took a quantum jump it jumped from the monkey dimension and came into the human dimension human as we know it today and the progress has been going on ever since expansion of consciousness that is one of the most important role of yajna yajna is much more than that but the basic aspect is this the other aspect is balancing and then there are multiple aspects which we will be looking at tomorrow so our aim in this conclave is to try and work on these principles understand them better what is ecology what are the ways we can work with ecological principles to improve our levels and our lives what is a different way of looking at ecology the vedic perspective 
what are the tools and then in the final we will look at how the principles of yoga are combined with the principles of yajna to take the entire thing to a different dimension making a change i have seen personally when yajna is performed regularly then there is a marked difference in the fertility of the soil in the type of environment in the type of flow of energy at rikia yajnas are performed at all times and whatever you plant over there it just comes up the trees bear fruit much more than in the surroundings the ashram did not add very many nutrients and this that the other the trees were growing as they grow elsewhere but they bear much better quality and better quantity of fruit why the only thing which was different is the practice of yajna which is performed over there so there is a very clear correlation in there there are so many things which can be understood one example comes to my mind there was in one of the latin american countries there was a widespread infection all along the country in the crops and the staple crop of the country was very badly affected and they did not know what to do this is the story told by a person who has actually done it and the banks have affirmed it the crops were failing all over there was this person who was interested in yajna and they contacted a person in india what can we do and he was told to use the mahamrityunjay mantra and do havan regularly in the field of that person there was no infestation the crops were perfect now because the crops were failing all the country over what happened was the loans which people had taken were going bad and the banks were in a dilemma what to do what not to do and here comes one person they found not only did this person not request for uh, please you know waive my loan but that person came in and paid off the person's loan so they were very surprised and they decided to investigate the matter they found that this person was doing this avan regularly and due to that avan they found there was no infestation in his fields you will be very surprised to know that they made it as a prerequisite that if you want to have another loan you need to undertake this practice only then we will give this loan to you and mind you this was not in a country where the culture speaks of yajna as a very highly uh, revered event this was a country where they had no understanding of that they just knew something was happening but they found what was happening was very effective and they made it compulsory there are so many such examples that goes to show that there is a deep scientific basis to it there are research which are going on which have shown that the growth of plants changes there are research which shows that the bacterial count the viral count changes there are 
research will show that rainfall changes. So, if this is something which is being proven now by modern scientific methods also, then let the scientist within us wake up and look at it with positive skepticism, not dogma or negative skepticism. No. We need to observe, we need to understand and then apply these principles so that we can make a change. We are in the midst of an emergency. You can see the glaciers are melting, the sea levels are rising, the climate is changing, pollution is way beyond. Just before the session, somebody was telling that within, uh, I think, uh, 20, 30 years, they said, the study says there's going to be more plastic in the ocean than fish. These are all alarming situations. And we need to take decisive steps. But what are these steps? What are the impact of these steps? How can we do it? That is what we have to study. That is what we have to understand. Very purposefully, I am not going into the details of each of this. I am just bringing out points, hinting at it, so that when each of the session comes, you can know the details of it. And I will request all of you to come up with questions. Because always remember, the more the questions, the better the discussion and the better knowledge we can receive. So therefore, make use of this. And at the end of it, we will have some very practical takeaways by which we can contribute to changes in nature. Remember, every drop counts. Every ocean is made up of drops. The ocean doesn't come up from top. Every drop collectively makes an ocean. So if I make a change in myself, you make a change in yourself and hundreds such people start making that change. That movement starts. A ground level movement. A movement without noise. A silent revolution. And this silent revolution has to be on the mundane level, has to be on the mental level, has to be on the emotional level, and has to be on the psychic and supra-psychic level also. Only then will the pollution, will the damage at all levels be corrected. And when the critical mass is reached, suddenly you will see amazing change taking place. But for that, we need to get out of our complacent nature and start making that change within ourselves. That is the aim of this conclave. That is the aim of program. And that is also the aim of the Satyam Shatabdi Yogya to create a breakthrough. When Swami Satyananda came to Rikhya, he said that it was only at Rikhya that he got the breakthrough in his spiritual life. His guru, Swami Shivananji, had told him, you have come to the station, wait too early. You have to wait. Swamiji said that when you wait at the railway station, what do you do? You read newspaper, you have some snacks, kinia mungfali, that is what Swamiji did. For him, teaching yoga was just Chinya Mungpalli, waiting for the train to arrive. And when he came to Rikhya, he had that breakthrough in his spiritual life. And he went beyond. And this year can be the year of the breakthrough for us. If we use the principles has talked to him. The aim of Swamiji's life was not to make a big ashram. No, that was never his aim. His aim was very different. But he became a medium, a means 
for divine energy divine powers to share at vidya swami ji showed the different aspects of yoga living yoga he spoke of yoga of the heart so love give so that you can make a change in the society but society is not made up only of people society is made up of much more than that how can we make a change in those subtle dimensions that is where swami ji brought in the concept of yajna these are the various aspects which will be discussed and i hope i have created enough curiosity and food for thought so that we can have a very lively very enjoyable session with lot of interactions lot of questions and i will ask i'll request the moderators to be active on this part and whatever questions are there they can be coupled compiled and they can be given to the speakers so that the questions which are there these questions are answered and we can make a change this is not just a theoretical discussion but this needs to culminate into a practical statements it is this which is there in our mind when we started the satyam yoga conclave on earth हरिओम सत्सत नमो नारायण जय